Hi, this is Joe again with another movie review, and today I'm going to be discussing the 1988 film Big, starring Tom Hanks, Elizabeth per and Elizabeth Perkins, <coughs> along with Robert Loja and Anthony Held, I think, is also in the film. Of course, this is the movie that earned Tom Hanks his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor, even though he will eventually lose to Dustin Hoffman, you know, for uh, Rain Man. But, but this is the first film that people consider Tom Hanks to be a serious actor. Of course, he starred in a movie and previously reviewed Splash, and he didn't get nomination, but he got he didn't get recognition for Knowles uh, for, for that film. But also, I also got noticed for being of Tom Hanks. No, not Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks being of Tom Hanks. That's going. Cool. But uh, he he got noticed for being of Fonzie in terms of Happy Days, which you can see that clip on uh, YouTube. Plus, he also stole on television show called Bulls and Buddies. So it was kind of noticed for for more of his comedy. But for Big, it was the first movie that he did that. You know, dealt with his how he could act in a drama, but this is this is what really was a comedy drama. Uh, when the movie starts off with uh, Josh Baskin, I feel who played the young, the younger version of, of the character, but he always wanted to be big, he was shorter than everybody else, and he of course he wasn't impressed this girl that kind of had a crush on. He really said. He was too short to go on this particular ride. So he's bummed out that couldn't be in the same way with the girl he likes. So he's walking around in this uh, carnival in New Jersey. And he gets to this ma machine that tells you fortune. Or, or whatever the fortune, you make, make a wish in this machine. It's more like a Zoltar machine. And he, you know, he makes a wish he wants to be big. He just wants to be taller. Uh, big in terms of height, not, not so much uh, age-wise. Of course, the cord, the cord pops out and it says, uh, your wish has been granted. But the weird part of it is, is that the machine was not plugged in. So you have a little like, weird Twilight Zone thing going on. So that so that night, while he was sleeping, the gods and made him into a 30-year-old guy, which happened to be Tom Hanks. And, and when he comes down for breakfast, he first his mother thought he had a cold or something. And then when he realized he was an adult, he said, Mom, it's me, it's Josh. And the mother couldn't believe it, kicked him out of the house, thought it was some burglar who kidnapped uh, through the rest of the movie. The mother thought that he was, it's gonna mistaken sciences. The, 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 the mother thought that um, her son had been, had been kidnapped. In the meantime, he can he uh, tracks down his friend, and name is Billy. <coughs> yeah, sciences. Uh, he, uh, his friend Billy actually believes that he was that, that he was Josh because of a little th little thing that the two the two of them do and nobody else does. So, so then he believes it was Josh, and they decides to help him out. So, so they're going to New York City, the Times Square. Now, this was back in the days. This, is, this movie came out in 1988, so it was back in the days when Times Square was still considered a red light district. And so you had these crazy bums walking around the street, talking to themselves, going, "Kill the bitch!" Kill. There's one. There's one guy going, "Kill the bitch! Kill the bitch! Kill the bitch!" And then, of course, after you have all these hookers around, and he goes to this DZ hotel, and he stays there. And meanwhile, they go and say, "Oh, let's go look uh, for for a job." And he goes to this toy works in this toy company called McMillan called McMillan Toys, who was run by Robert Loja. Before then. They were looking around for the machine. They said, oh, we're going to get like for like six weeks. Maybe in approximately six weeks you get this um, 
the information where all the carnivals and the arcades and stuff. So he, uh, me, meanwhile, I said, okay, what am I going to do for myself for six weeks? I mean, I'm going to be stuck like this for six weeks. So I said, okay, let's see if I can get a job. You know, come away to getting a job. So he goes to this Macmillan Toys Company, like I said earlier, it was run by Robert Lozier. And of course, he meets two forward with Anthony Hill, who is this driven guy who doesn't really care who he has to step on, get ahead. And with his girlfriend slash co-worker, played by Elizabeth Perkins, and he and she was hot in this movie. You know, later on she was in the Lousy Flintstones movie, but that's the only two films I've seen her in. And of course, she it was like an instant attraction between her and Tom Hanks in the film. Because she somehow was strangely attracted to Tom Hanks' character. Uh, because he, she had, he had like, obviously a child... Uh, childlike enthusiasm, and I wonder why because he was supposed to be like 12 years old. Well, his character was supposed to be 12. And so the whole thing goes out. He does get a job, but the funny part of it is he does not have a social security card. So he makes up a social security number. And which is like a, a bogus, bogus number. And of course, if you look close, you'll see John Lovitz as a co-worker. You know, when you first start working for the Miller Toys, you see John Lovitz and for you Beverly Hills 90210 fans, I'm talking about the original series, not the crappy remake. You see Jim Eckhouse who played uh, Jim Walsh in the original Beverly Hills 90210 series. So you see him, when you see him in that one scene, and with John Lovitz, you see him in a couple of scenes. And of course, he gets ahead and he makes an impression on Robert Loja's character, because there's a famous scene, or the most iconic scene in Big, other than, <coughs> other than, of course, when he makes the wish. The other iconic scene in the film is the scene that takes place in Ethereal Swartz, which other than Toys of Us, it's the most famous uh, toy store in New York City. It's been in the same spot for like years. Or uh, 59th Street and Fifth Avenue. In case you want to know where the store is, and they and he's playing around in the store, playing like laser tag with another kid. And then he went, of course, runs into one of Malosha's character. And he says, "He says, oh, you work with me, don't you?" And he says. Yeah, I do. He said, oh, you here with your kids? And no, I'm not here, I'm not here for my kids. I'm not here for myself. And, and he says, oh, I come, and he said, I come here every Saturday. He said, you can't see this in the marketing report. That's what's a marketing report. This is exactly, exactly my point. So he sees all these, you know, looks around the whole FEO sports, and he sees what kids really like. And then when Robert Lozier's character goes to these report meetings, and he knows that what's, you know, there in his meetings, when he gets these stupid marketing reports, it's bullshit, because you see where the story is, you see what the kids like, actually like. And you can't see that in the stupid reports. That was his, that was his point. And of course, as they were walking around the store, they come to this famous uh, floor piano, which is like floor size. And they do chopsticks. And if you remember the other song they play, they play like whole, uh, two two musical things on the piano. One of them, of course, is chopsticks. And of course, they like became a big hit. And that floor piano is still, I believe, if I'm not wrong, I believe it's still there in F.E.O. Swartz. And of course, at the time when the movie came out, more people went to F.E.O. Swartz at the time. Uh, especially in the Taurus or uh, excuse the line because I have my window shades up and the sun's coming in here. Uh, ever since then, kids and adults are trying to reenact that scene in, in Big. Now, of course, so, but the other scene it was also pretty good is that he 
that Tom Hanks comes into a relationship with Elizabeth Perkins. And there's one particular scene where it was pretty funny. It's when he has gets rid of the, gets out of the crappy hotel and gets his own loft. And of course, uh, after a party, which is in like this crazy, when Tom Hanks is wearing like this crazy uh, out to giant style tuxedo, uh, he goes with Elizabeth Perkins back to his uh, apartment. And she says to him, "Oh, I'd like to spend the night with you." And you see, she wants to have, you know, that she wants to have sex with Tom Hanks. And, and he says, "Okay," but it gets me on top. Of course, that's that, that's a you know that's a real life. I got a big laugh because he goes to the apartment and you see a bunk bed. So I put a little bit of on the bottom, and Tom Hanks is on top. So so that's what Tom Hanks meant. But, but of course. You know, you think it's going to be on top of having sex, which is, which is funny. Of course, the other notable feature in this film is that you see why Playland, which is in Westchester County, which is in Wine, New York, where the girl, where Tom Hanks and Elizabeth Perkins goes on a date. And of course, at the end of that scene, you see Elizabeth Perkins in the bra, and, and, and you saw that scene, and said, damn, <laughs> you know. Uh, if she wasn't an actress, she could be a model with the, the with the figure that she has. And at least at that time, I don't know about now. But now, of course, the more that he works, the more he forgets the life that he had when he was a kid. Because he was a 12 year old kid. So, so, of course, the scene where Billy gets the information from the Department of Consumer Affairs, goes to Tom Hanks, and, and he says, hey, you got and you got the information. And this old time machine is at this park of my you know my plane there. And he says, Billy, god damn it, you know he says, I'm working here. And he says, I'm, and then of course John says, I'm older than you asshole and, and he walks out. And of course Tommy realizes that he wanted to go back to where to where he was, you know, at the beginning of the film. And then, of course, he tells Elizabeth Perkins, look, I'm actually a 13-year-old, because he turned 13. Well, his character turns 13 in the course of the film. He says, I'm a 13-year-old kid. And she goes, well, who is it? No, I'm actually 13. He tries to explain the, the story. What has been happening to him. And at first, Elizabeth Perkins didn't want to believe it. And then, of course, after a while, they had, like, a product showing. And then Elizabeth Perkins realized that he was a 13 year old kid. And so of course they had this big scene at the uh, at the park of White Plain there. And it says, oh, what, uh, even though in the movie it was called something else. I forgot, I forgot what the, they, they guess they couldn't use the title of White Plain there, so they made up something else. And so, so they go to, this, go to the park and say, oh, here, here's the um, plan. And when he sees the machine, and, and now she finally believes what it was, well, it makes it makes sense. Of all the stuff you've been doing with the company, it kind of makes sense of all these ideas you had. You know, for, for all the toys and and everything else. That's Now I understand what you were talking about. Because it makes sense that you're a 12-year-old kid. And of course, Tom Hanks says, what there's about many reasons for me to go back to where he, the way it was before. That's why it wasn't easy for me to stay. That's you. And I fell, I fell in love with you and all that stuff. So, so, so she says, look, it's all right. And Tommy Hanks says, look, why don't you make a wish to wish you were younger and we could, you know, be together for the rest of our lives. You could do, why, why can't you do it? You could do that too. You can come with me. Uh, back when you, when you were 12. Or 13, 12 or 13, and we could be, be together for the rest of our lives. And Elizabeth Perkins says, No. And he says, Why? It's because I already lived through it. Once already. It's tough enough to go through it once. You're going through you know, your teenage years and puberty and all that. It's tough enough, isn't it? It's tough enough the first time. And you don't know how tough it is yet to go, to go, to go through that. And, and of course, and I already went through it once, it's already tough enough, so I don't want to go through that again. So, so he says, so he says, 
he was disappointed, but he, but he accepted it. And then, of course, then the broker says, okay, come on, and drive you home. And, of course, when he gets out of the car, you see him change from the adult to the kid. And you can see what a sad, sad puppy dog look that he had on his face. And that's the adult Tom Hanks, but the, but the kid. And, of course, the kid went back to the house. And, of course, the mother sees him and says, oh, Josh, you're home. And, of course, that's, you know, how the movie ends. There's a movie, it was a very good movie, it also made Penny Marshall career as an act, as a director as well. And But, uh, you know, over the last few years, Penny Marshall hasn't made all that many movies because I think she has some health problems. So so she hasn't made all that many films. But it was like the first film that became a hit, kind of like Splash became, was the first directorial hit for Ron Howard. Big was the first hit that Penny Marshall has made. We only made a, a vi video before, a, vi a review before of League of Their Own, which is one of the highest viewed videos they've done for League of Their Own. Also starred Tom Hanks and directed by Penny Marshall. We were big. Between Splash and Big, Tom Hanks hasn't made all that many good movies between, the, between those two films. Uh, he, he did movies like Nothing in Common. And every time you say goodbye, which was two, if you've never seen those two move, two films, those, those two movies are very, very good. And of course, he made crappy films like Tuna and Hooch and Dragnet movie. And of course, that those two films, everybody remembers how awful they were. And then, of course, he got this movie, he got big, then he got big. And of course, then again, he ran into a little little cycle and he had crappy movies. And then he ran, ran off like about five or six good films in a row. Starting with, um, I think Steve said Seattle, then you had League of Their Own, then you had Philadelphia, then Forrest Gump, and Apollo 13. Then you had about five good movies in a row. Right, from, from Tom Hanks in the 90s. He like grew the 90s. But that's my review of um, Big. Uh, please like my videos. Com please feel free to comment on it. And subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.